landing a rocket on a moving drone ship floating in the middle of the ocean sounds like science fiction. But for SpaceX, it's not just a bold idea, it's the next chapter in Starship's evolution. Recently, this ambitious plan took a step closer to becoming reality, thanks to a newly released FAA document that officially mentions SpaceX's intention to land Starship on ocean-based drone ships. But that revelation brings us to a bigger and more pressing question. What happens after that? How does Starship return home safely after such a landing? This isn't just a theoretical question. It's something many have been wondering about for a while now, and surprisingly, SpaceX already has a well-thought-out answer. They're calling it horizontal transportation. But why has SpaceX chosen this unconventional method? What are the challenges involved? And what sort of upgrades or technology will be required to make it all work? In today's episode, we'll dive deep into the fascinating logistics behind this new recovery strategy, and what it tells us about the future of space travel. It's hard to believe, but it's already been two years since Starship's very first integrated test flight. Since then, the vehicle has undergone a series of upgrades, tweaks, and massive iterations. Now, we find ourselves on the cusp of Flight 9, a milestone that represents just how far Starship has come. And this moment has just been amplified by a game-changing approval. The FAA has officially greenlit SpaceX's Starship launch operations at its Texas Starbase site. This isn't just a routine checkmark. This approval allows SpaceX to launch up to 25 Starships per year from this single location. More importantly, the FAA has granted flexibility that removes mandatory delays for mishap investigations after each anomaly. That alone could dramatically accelerate the pace of Starship development and testing. Without the red tape and downtime that comes after every minor issue, SpaceX now has the opportunity to build, launch, recover, and relaunch at a rate that was never possible before. But while the approval itself is massive news, the FAA document also includes another critical detail one that hints at SpaceX's long-term recovery strategy. Alongside the launch authorization, the document outlines multiple designated landing zones for Starship. These aren't just randomly chosen locations, they're strategically positioned across the globe. Among them are offshore regions near Texas in the Gulf of Mexico, locations scattered throughout the Indian Ocean, and two separate zones in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. What's interesting about this is that many of these sites are positioned far from populated areas and, more importantly, far from any solid ground. That means SpaceX plans to recover Starship not on land but at sea, using floating drone ships. This method echoes the successful recovery process used for the Falcon 9, but there's a twist. Starship is a very different beast. By now, many space fans are familiar with how Falcon 9 boosters land on drone ships. The rocket returns from space performs a precision vertical landing on a floating platform, and is then secured for the journey back to shore. This approach has worked spectacularly well. It's allowed dozens of rockets to be reused, slashing launch costs and proving that rapid reusability isn't just possible, it's practical. But now comes Starship, and with it, an entirely new level of complexity. For starters, the size difference is staggering. A Falcon 9 booster stands about 47 meters tall and weighs around 25.6 tons when empty. In contrast, the Super Heavy booster alone is approximately 71 meters tall, and Starship's upper stage adds another 50 meters. And that's just the current design. According to the FAA documentation, future upgrades could increase these figures even further, with Super Heavy potentially reaching up to 80 meters in height. Imagine trying to balance a rocket that tall on a floating barge in rough ocean waters, it's a logistical nightmare. Given those dimensions, Many people initially assumed SpaceX would try to land and transport Starship vertically, just like they do with Falcon 9. But the newly released FAA environmental assessment makes it clear, that's not going to happen. Instead, SpaceX will use what they call horizontal transportation. So what exactly does that mean? Essentially, after Starship or Super Heavy lands on a drone ship, the rocket will be transitioned from a vertical position into a horizontal one. This won't be done hastily or carelessly. The plan involves what the FAA refers to as a breakover fixture assembly, a controlled and carefully supported procedure where the rocket is gently tilted using a mechanical system. Most likely, this will involve a series of cranes or pivot mechanisms that allow the rocket to be laid down safely without putting stress on the structure. So why not just keep it upright? The answer comes down to safety. Even Falcon 9, which is far smaller, has experienced instability during ocean transport. There have been incidents where boosters tipped over due to high waves or strong winds during their return to port. And those rockets have legs that help stabilize them. Starship doesn't. 
transporting a rocket the size of a skyscraper across choppy seas without that support is simply too dangerous. The risk of tipping over or suffering structural damage is high. With horizontal transportation, the rocket is laid flat and strapped down securely, minimizing movement and allowing it to be stabilized during transit. This method reduces the chance of damage and ensures that each recovered vehicle remains in good condition for future reuse. Of course, this recovery strategy comes with its own set of challenges. For one, moving such a large object horizontally requires an entirely different approach to securing and stabilizing the vehicle. The ship's deck will need specialized cradles and supports to keep the rocket locked in place. Every movement, every sway or jolt caused by ocean waves, has to be anticipated and accounted for. This demands sophisticated monitoring systems, real-time feedback loops, and precision engineering. And that's just the recovery phase. Once the vehicle is back on land, additional infrastructure will be needed to lift it back into a vertical position for inspection, maintenance, and reflight. Despite the added complexity, the benefits are undeniable. By prioritizing safety and structural integrity, SpaceX is setting itself up for long-term success. The horizontal method ensures that even in rough weather, recovered starships can make it back intact and ready for another journey. In time, this could play a key role in achieving one of SpaceX's most ambitious goals, rapid reusability. Imagine a scenario where starships are launched, landed, recovered, refurbished, and launched again within weeks, not months. Horizontal transport is one of the puzzle pieces needed to make that vision a reality. The big question now is how SpaceX will implement this strategy at scale. Recovering one rocket is one thing. But if SpaceX wants to maintain a high launch cadence, especially with the FAA now permitting up to 25 flights per year, then they'll need a robust and flexible system to manage all those moving parts. For each designated landing region, SpaceX will likely need at least two operational ships. One vessel will remain in position to support incoming landings, while the other transports recovered rockets back to shore. This redundancy is vital if the company hopes to avoid launch delays and maintain a steady pace. There's also the matter of the ships themselves. It's not yet clear whether SpaceX plans to carry the landed rocket directly on the drone ship or transfer it to a separate transport vessel afterward. Both options have pros and cons and either way it will require a large and capable fleet. In fact, some insiders have suggested that SpaceX could develop a supersized transport vessel, something similar in scale to an aircraft carrier. This would be a floating base capable of holding multiple starships or super heavy boosters at once. That kind of capability would be game-changing, allowing SpaceX to operate at a scale never before seen in aerospace. This idea isn't just speculation. John Edwards, a VP at SpaceX, recently hinted at something similar while discussing the logistics of handling Falcon Heavy boosters. If the company is already exploring these kinds of solutions for Falcon Heavy, it's likely only a matter of time before similar plans emerge for Starship. A giant floating port, equipped with cranes, stabilization systems, and full processing capabilities, could serve as the backbone for a global launch and recovery network. Starships would land at sea, be brought aboard, inspected, and sent on their way again. No return to a fixed launch site required. And that's just the beginning. With horizontal recovery in place, SpaceX could one day extend this model to missions beyond Earth. Think lunar launches, Mars supply runs, or orbital refueling operations. The flexibility and safety offered by horizontal transportation could allow SpaceX to recover and reuse Starship in virtually any environment. It's a small change in how rockets are moved, but it represents a huge leap forward in how we think about spaceflight. Recovery and reducing turnaround time between missions is one of the biggest hurdles SpaceX needs to overcome to make Starship truly reusable. Unlike Falcon 9, which has a more mature recovery system, Starship size and design demand a completely new set of solutions. Each drone ship or transport vessel will need a specialized system that can safely shift the vehicle from a vertical landing position to a horizontal transport configuration. This is no small task. We're talking about mechanisms that must handle hundreds of tons while operating in the challenging, often unpredictable conditions of the open sea. These mechanisms must be compact and extremely robust. Not only do they have to manage the sheer weight of the landed vehicle, but they also need to ensure stability while the platform may be rocking due to waves and ocean currents. This means incorporating shock absorption and precise movement control. It's not just about lifting the rocket, it's about doing so in a way that protects the delicate systems within the Starship and Super Heavy booster. One wrong move could cause damage that delays refurbishment or even takes a vehicle out of commission entirely. To further assist in this process, 
SpaceX might incorporate a deluge system similar to the ones used on launch pads during liftoff. This kind of system sprays large volumes of water to suppress sound, pressure, and heat. In the context of landings, it could help reduce stress on the ship's deck and the rocket's base during and after touchdown. This would also help cool the surface, preventing heat-related degradation over time. Such systems add complexity, but they may become essential components of drone ship recovery infrastructure. Perhaps the biggest design challenge, though, lies in the structural demands. Starship and Super Heavy generate immense thrust and carry enormous weight, especially when descending at high speed for a landing. These transport systems must be designed to handle repeated impacts, not just once or twice but over the long term. Falcon 9 has proven reusable, but Starship raises the stakes. It's far larger, heavier, and more complex, requiring a new level of engineering durability and adaptive flexibility. One unique challenge is the current absence of landing legs on Starship. Right now, both stages rely on ground-based or tower-assisted recovery systems. But for drone ship landings to work, especially if the rocket is to be transitioned horizontally afterward, a support mechanism must be put in place. Adding permanent legs sounds simple in theory, but in practice, it could interfere with how the rocket is laid down and secured for horizontal transport. That presents a real problem that engineers need to solve innovatively. A potential solution being explored is a foldable landing leg system. These legs would deploy just for landing and then retract or fold out of the way before the vehicle is shifted into a horizontal position. That would preserve the smooth base required for transport and allow for secure stabilization during ocean recovery. It's an elegant idea, but engineering foldable legs is anything but easy. It would require extensive redesigns of the rocket's aft section, not to mention upgrades in hydraulic systems and careful rerouting of internal plumbing and engine configurations. Interestingly, if SpaceX does figure out how to successfully implement foldable legs, it won't just benefit Earth-based recoveries. This kind of system would be a major advantage for landings on the Moon or Mars, where soft, uneven terrain makes fixed legs risky. The ability to deploy and retract legs depending on the landing environment could make Starship even more versatile for interplanetary missions. But of course, these innovations come with trade-offs in complexity, weight, and structural integration that SpaceX will have to account for during development. Beyond technical design, there's the geopolitical factor to consider. SpaceX won't always be operating in U.S. waters. While coastal regions like the Gulf of Mexico or the Pacific fall under U.S. jurisdiction, SpaceX has long-term plans to conduct landings in far more remote regions. These include the Indian Ocean and waters off the coast of South Africa. To land vehicles there, they'll need international cooperation, diplomatic agreements and logistical support from neighboring nations and that can be unpredictable and time-consuming. Australia, for example, could become a key partner in such efforts, thanks to its technological capabilities and strategic location. But coordination with South American nations remains uncertain. Some governments may hesitate to support a private company using their waters for rocket recovery due to environmental, legal, or security concerns. These regulatory or logistical roadblocks could delay or even halt some of SpaceX's more ambitious offshore plans if not resolved early and collaboratively. That's why international diplomacy is becoming as important as engineering. Despite all this, if SpaceX can successfully address these challenges, it could massively expand the operational flexibility of Starship. Landing at sea, for instance, significantly improves safety. The ocean serves as a vast buffer zone, minimizing risks to humans, buildings, and natural habitats. In case a landing goes wrong or the vehicle experiences a malfunction during descent, the rocket can simply be diverted into the sea. This avoids potential disaster scenarios that would be more severe on land. Safety aside, drone ship landings offer a huge performance advantage. When a rocket has to return to a specific land-based site, it burns precious fuel which limits payload capacity. But if the rocket can land at sea directly along its flight path, SpaceX can skip that fuel-intensive maneuver. This means more fuel is available to push payloads higher into orbit or even deeper into space. In short, drone ship landings free up performance that would otherwise be sacrificed for recovery purposes. Then there's the incredible mobility that drone ships provide. Unlike static ground facilities, these ships can be repositioned almost anywhere in the ocean. They can follow the rocket's trajectory, align with unique orbital paths, and allow for landings in places that ground infrastructure simply can't reach. This is particularly useful for polar or high-energy orbits where return trajectories differ significantly. 
Having the ability to move the recovery zone closer to the expected landing site is a strategic game-changer for long-range missions. SpaceX has already started laying the groundwork for this global approach. In the past, they partnered with nations like the Bahamas to expand their recovery capabilities. With Starship they're aiming to go even bigger. The FAA's final environmental assessment of SpaceX's plans clearly indicates multiple offshore landing zones around the globe. This isn't a theoretical idea. SpaceX has identified concrete geographic targets to implement its vision of scalable sea-based recovery for the Starship era. Up until recently, the biggest obstacle to this vision wasn't landing itself, it was what came afterward. Transporting something as massive as Starship back to shore after a drone ship landing posed serious challenges. That's where the shift to horizontal transportation becomes so important. Instead of keeping the rocket upright, SpaceX can now lay it down safely, reducing the height and center of gravity for shipboard travel. It's a safer, more manageable solution that makes large-scale sea recovery much more feasible. Looking ahead, this same strategy is expected to expand to SpaceX's operations in Florida. The FAA's Environmental Impact Statement for Starship launches from Kennedy Space Center explicitly includes drone ship recovery as an approved method. That tells us the infrastructure is already being considered, if not actively under development. SpaceX could soon have dedicated transport systems ready to horizontally move recovered stages from sea to refurbishment centers near the launch site. That kind of integration would streamline the entire turnaround process. The combination of safety, performance, and adaptability makes this new approach to drone ship landings one of the most important developments in Starship's evolution. With both tower-assisted and sea-based recoveries in play, SpaceX will have the flexibility to adjust recovery plans based on mission type, orbital path, or even weather conditions. The system becomes modular. Recovery no longer needs to rely on a single location or method. That kind of resilience is what will allow Starship to scale up in both frequency and reliability. Once the final logistical pieces are in place, from foldable legs to international recovery agreements, SpaceX will be free to fully exploit Starship's enormous potential. We could see more frequent launches, quicker turnarounds, and better mission economics. Each flight becomes less of a gamble and more of a routine. That's what true reusability means. It's not just about bringing the rocket back. It's about doing so consistently, efficiently, and affordably, no matter where in the world it lands. In the end, the road to a reusable interplanetary spaceflight system is filled with engineering hurdles and logistical puzzles. But SpaceX has already proven that persistence, creativity, and innovation can overcome even the most difficult barriers. With drone ship landings and horizontal transport as key pillars, the future of Starship looks more flexible and powerful than ever. So let's keep watching because the next milestone could be just over the horizon.